Recording in progress. Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's class. We're going to be going over the basics of scratch and coding. So if you've never coded before, this is a great class to be in. So just so you're aware, this is a class designed for kids around anywhere from ages six to 12. But if you're a little younger or a little older, no problem at all. Um, each week we'll be launching a new class designed to focus on something new. So today is just kind of the basics. Next week, we'll be doing things like jumping and running. And in the future, you'll see things like how to create a code for high scores, how to do a two player game, all sorts of different topics. So it's going to be very fun. Um, before we get started, there's a couple things you'll need. This class works best if you have two screens. So what will be happening today is you'll be building your own game on your computer, but it's really helpful if you can see me at the same time. So if you have a tablet or maybe a second computer screen where you can pull up this YouTube video, it's really going to make it easy so you can watch the video on one screen and then be building your own game on your computer. If you don't have two screens, that's okay. You can always pause the video after I've shown you what to do and then flip over to a new window or a new browser or tab and you can pull up your own game um, and then go back to the video. So that will be great. All right, let's go ahead. I'm gonna share my screen with you. Um, the second thing that you'll need is on the computer where you're going to be building your own game, this is the website you need to go to. I will put a link to it in the um, right at the top of the description in this YouTube video, but you can also see the web address right up here. This is a website called scratch.mit.edu, okay? So go ahead and type that into your um, internet browser. And you can do this class without having an account if you'd like. If you do have an account, it's great because then you'll be able to save your games, anything that you create. You can come back in later, add more code to those. You can email them to friends and family. It's really fun to have your own account. And that's something a grown up or your parents can help you do safely. There's a lot of great privacy settings. This is a website designed for kids, so it's very safe to have an account on. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So once you're in your account or on the Scratch website, um, you're going to want to go to create. This means we want to create something. We're either creating a game or maybe an animation. Today, we're going to be creating a game, okay? Now in Scratch, there's a few different things I'd like to show you really quick. One is there's something called sprites. So see this little icon down here where I'm wiggling my mouse? That is called a sprite. So if I say today, all right, click on the cat sprite. I'm talking about this right here. I'm not talking about soda, okay? <laughs> the next thing I want you to um, look for is all these blue things over here on the left side of your screen. These are your coding blocks you're going to be using today. And the coding blocks are organized by color. So for example, if I said, okay, we need a yellow coding block, you're gonna click on this yellow circle and it will take you to all of the yellow coding blocks, okay? And when you find the coding block you want, what you'll do is you'll grab that block and you'll drag it out into the center. Anywhere out here in the middle is great. That's where we'll be building our code. Now I want you to think of these coding blocks kind of like Legos or building blocks. And as we hook them together, that is building the, the instructions or the directions for our game that we're creating today. All right, so let's go ahead and get started, okay? The first thing we're going to do is we need to pick out a background. What do we want our game to look like? So if you'll come over here on the far right side of your screen where I'm wiggling my mouse and it says stage, go ahead and click on that. And then up in the top left corner, we've got these three tabs up here. We're going to click on the tab that says backdrops. Okay, this is where we get to go and we can either draw our own backdrop or we can go pick one out. Today, we're going to pick one out. So down in the bottom left corner, there's a little blue circle that says choose a backdrop. When you open that, it takes you to the Scratch library where there are tons of fun backdrops to choose from. I'm gonna go with kind of an ocean theme for my game today, but if you wanna pick out a different one, that's totally fine, okay? If you like the ocean one, it's down towards the bottom. Okay, now you can see up here in this right corner, that's my video game. I've got an ocean backdrop, hooray! Okay, next thing we need to do, let's add some music to our game, okay? So we need to go back to our code. So see the code tab up in the top left corner? That'll take us back to where we build our code. So we were on the backdrops. Now we're going back to the code. 
Okay, there's three coding blocks that we need. The first coding block is yellow. So click on the yellow circle and this top coding block has a green flag on it. You're gonna drag that out and just drop it out here in the center, okay? The second coding block that we need is orange. So click on the orange circle and the third coding block down, it has the word forever on it. This is called the forever loop. We're gonna drag that forever loop out and just connect it to the green flag. Now I'll explain the forever loop a little bit more in just a second. Okay, the third coding block that we need for music is going to be in the sound circle. So that's this purplish circle. And we want the very top block. It says play sound pop until done. Drag that out and just put that inside the forever loop. So it kind of looks like the forever loop is eating it. All right, now we've got to go pick out our music. So if you click on this word pop, you can see there's only one sound effect in there. It's called pop. That's not even a song. So let's go find a song, okay? So up in the top left corner, there's a tab that says sounds. That's gonna take us to all the sounds that we want to use in our game today. Down in the bottom left corner, we're gonna click on that blue circle that says choose a sound. All right, now this has sound effects and music in it. Since we're looking for music right now, I'll show you a little shortcut to find songs. You wanna click on this thing that says loops at the top. These are all the categories for the sounds, but loops are kind of longer ones that sound more like music. So if you just hover your mouse over the purple circle, you'll be able to hear it. When you find the one that you want, go ahead and click on it, okay? I'm gonna go with, oh yeah, that's a good one. I don't know. I'm gonna go with this song called Video Game, I think. So once I find it, I'm gonna click on it. Okay, if you need to pause this video while you go through all those, go ahead and just hit pause. Sometimes the space bar is a quick way to pause the video and then you can look around for a minute. Okay, once you found your code and you've clicked on it, it should show up over here. See how my little video game showed up? Now go back to your code tab up in the top left corner. And now in our little drop down menu, you should have that song that you picked out. Okay, let me read you the code that you've created so far. It says, all right, video game, when I click on the green flag, I want you to play the sound called video game one until done. But because it's in a forever loop, that means as soon as that song is over, repeat and keep playing over and over and over again. So we've got to figure out how do we turn the green flag on? Well, it's right up here in the right corner, okay? Click on that green flag and your music should start. And then when you hit the stop sign, your game will turn off. Okay, so you've done two things so far. You've added your backdrop and you've added some music to your game. Now let's add some characters to our game. So I don't really want a cat because I'm doing an ocean game and I don't really want a cat. If you wanna leave the cat, that's fine. If you want to delete it, when you click on the little cat sprite down here, there's a garbage can. Just click on that garbage can and it will get rid of him, okay? Now let's go pick out a new sprite. So down in the right corner, you have a little cat face. Click on that cat face. This will bring up all the different sprites that you can choose from. And they're organized up here. You have animals, people, food. Since I'm doing an ocean theme, I'm going to go find an animal. But you can find something different. You don't have to do the same thing as me. So I'm looking for like a shark. Oh, there we go. I found a shark. Okay. I clicked on it and it just got added to my game. Awesome. Now for what I'm trying to create today, that shark is way too big. I'm gonna have him like swimming all around. I wanna make him smaller. My guess is whatever sprite you picked is also super big. So let's shrink him down a bit. Right here, it says size 100. The smaller the number, the smaller our sprite will go. I'm gonna turn my shark down to a 30. See, now he's just a little guy floating around. You can grab him and drag him and move him around if you need to. Um, you could, might do a 40 or a 50. You can put whatever number you want there. Our next step is to add some code that tells our character or our sprite that we want to control it with the arrows on our keyboard. Okay, so let's go over to the yellow event circle. And we need to get another green flag. Because turning the green flag, flag on is how you start your game, we use this coding block a ton. So try to remember where that one's at. All right, the next thing we need is an orange block. So go to the orange control circle and we're gonna get that forever loop again. Grab that one, it's the third block down and hook it right under your green flag. These are the two blocks that we use the most often, okay? So try to remember where those two are located and the rest will kind of show you as we go. Okay, underneath the forever loop, you have an if then loop. That's the fourth orange block down. Bring that out and stick that inside the forever loop. 
Now, if then loops are super cool because we're gonna use this to make some code that says, all right, shark, if I press on the right arrow, I want you to move to the right. So I've got to figure out how to get a block in this shadow that says pressing on the right arrow. And that's gonna be a turquoise block. So click on that turquoise sensing circle and go count down seven blocks from the top. You've got a block that says key space pressed. Bring that out and drop that inside your shadow right there. Okay, now we're not coding our space bar right now, we're coding our right arrow. So click on space bar and switch that to say right arrow, okay? All right, now it says, if I press on the right arrow, then what's gonna happen? Whatever coding blocks we put inside this loop, that's what's going to happen. So we've gotta find some coding blocks that say, move our guy to the right. So that's gonna be up here in the blue motion circle, okay? These are all of our coding blocks that make our sprites move. And we wanna get the very top block that says, move 10 steps. Go ahead and bring that out and drop that inside your if then loop. Okay, now let's test it out and see what's happening so far. So first of all, I don't want you to do this. I'm gonna come over to my stage and I'm gonna get rid of my music block. That way you don't have to hear my music when I'm showing you my game, okay? So I'm gonna click on my green flag up in the top right corner. That's gonna turn my game on. After you turn your game on, then on your keyboard, tap on that right arrow and see if your guy moves to the right, okay? He might move to the left. If he moves to the left, that's okay. We're gonna fix that in a second. All right, there's one more block that we need to add. Go ahead and hit your stop sign to turn your game off. About halfway down the blue menu, there's a block that says point in direction 90. Go ahead and bring that out and drop that on top of your other blue block. Now I know right now our guy went to the right, but what if we wanted to make him to go to the, what if we wanted to make him go to the left? We need a block in here that tells our guy which direction to move, okay? Well, I'll show you more about that in a little minute. All right, we've got one arrow down. Now we could build all that all over again for our left arrow, or I can show you a little shortcut. So bring your mouse up on top of your top coding block, this green flag, and right click it. Now, if you have a mouse, it's just right here on your mouse. It's the other button. If you're using a laptop, that's a little trickier. There's a few things you can try. You can try tapping with two fingers. Sometimes that's the same as right clicking or hold down the control button and then tap on your mouse pad and that might bring it up, okay? If that doesn't work, grab a grown up to help you out. All right, once you right click, you'll get a little thing that says duplicate. Click on that and we can just copy that entire code we just created. Shortcut, woohoo. Okay, now all we have to do is modify this one. Let me move myself over here. Okay, so we're gonna code our left arrow now. So take that turquoise block and switch that to left arrow, okay? Now, go ahead and turn your flag on and try hitting your left arrow. Whether I hit my left arrow or my right arrow, my guy just moves all the way to the right. Look at this. You can see his little tiny tail is right there. He's stuck. I can't get him to move to the left. He's totally stuck. Okay. If you hit these four arrows up here, it makes your game big. So sometimes I'll do that so you can see my game good. So we need to tell him to move to the left. So this block that says point in direction 90, click on the number 90. The, this arrow tells our guy which way to go. So let's swing that over to the left. Now it says negative 90. Okay, I'm gonna turn my game on again. Oh, now I can swim. Okay, now I'm going back and forth. Now I'm noticing my shark is kind of flipping upside down when I swim to the left. If that's happening to your guy, I'll show you a little trick to fix that. Down here where it says direction 90, click on that and try clicking these little arrows that are facing each other. Okay, let's try it now. Oh, perfect. Now my shark is swimming back and forth. Okay, now in our game today, we're gonna have some items kind of floating around that we're trying to collect. So we also want to be able to move up and down. So let's do the same duplicate, dupli duplicate, duplication, <laughs> the same little cheat code that we did a second ago, our shortcut. Right click either one of these, it doesn't matter which one, and let's make a third coding sequence. Okay, now let's fix this one so that it's our up arrow, okay? So on this new piece of code, we're going to switch that turquoise block to say up arrow. And then we need to click on the 90 again and swing that arrow up so that when we click on the up arrow, our guy moves up. And then let's do it one more time. I'm going to duplicate it once more. I'm going to switch this to say down arrow on my fourth one. And then click on the point in direction and swing that arrow down. All right, now what should happen is you should be able to turn on your green flag and use all four arrows to swim any way you want. 
And what's really cool is if you hold like the up arrow and the, and the right arrow at the same time, then you get to swim diagonal and you can do that any direction you want, okay? If it's not working for you, what I want you to do is pause your video right here, pause my video, and take a look at your code compared to my code. Go through each line of code and make sure they're the same. The things you'll really want to double check are these point in direction numbers. So like the right arrow is 90. The up arrow is zero, for example. So go through and check all of those if yours isn't working or grab a grown-up to help you look at it. Okay, our shark is moving. Hooray! Next thing we need to do is we need to find an item that we want the shark to collect, okay? Like the good thing that we're trying to chase. We're going to have one good item and one bad item. And if we touch the bad item, we're going to lose some points. So that's, that's not going to be fun. All right, let's go find another sprite. So come down to the little cat face and click on that. And I've got to find an item I want my shark to be looking for. If you have a different theme game, maybe a snow game, or you have a horse game, look for food. Food is always a good thing. So I'm going to click on the food up here. <clears throat> I'm going to have my shark chasing an apple. No, a strawberry. <laughs> Just something silly. Ooh, no, cake. He's going to be chasing cake. So click on whatever sprite you want. All right, now that cake showed up on my game and it is huge again. I'm gonna shrink it down probably to like a 25. Now see how I, my cake is a lot smaller than my shark. And again, you can drag that and move it around if you want. And it's okay to make your sprites really small because when you click on these four arrows and your game gets bigger, then it's a lot easier to see what's going on. All right, let's get this cake moving around. So we need to go back to our yellow event circle and get another green flag. Remember, that's almost always your first step. Then go to your orange control circle and get another forever loop. That's the third one down. Now, inside this forever loop, I want a coding block that tells my, my cake. All right, cake, I want you floating all around. So we're going to go up to the blue motion circle. Remember, the blue blocks are the ones that make your sprites move, okay? Now, if you count down six blocks from the top, you'll find a block that says glide one second to random position. Stick that inside the forever loop. Okay, turn your flag on and see what happens. That item, that food that you got or whatever you, whatever spread you chose is should be moving around. Now, the number one, that's how many seconds it takes to get to each position. So if I want to slow my cake down, I'm going to make that number bigger. So maybe I'm going to turn it up to like a three, but that's going to make the cake take three seconds to get to each position. So it's going to be a lot slower. The slower your items are moving can make your game easier or hard. It kind of depends. So we can adjust that later. Once we get all our game completed, you can come back in and change the speeds if your game feels too easy or too hard. Okay, the next step is we've got to tell our game, what do we want to have happen when the shark gets to the cake? Do you want the cake to disappear? Do you want to get some points? Do you want a sound effect to play? So we've got to build some directions to tell our game to do that. So let's go get another green flag. Remember that's in the yellow circle and another forever loop. Okay, so orange, go to the orange circle and bring out another forever loop. Just kind of drop this off to the side here. Then for this one, we will need an if then loop. So that's the fourth orange block down. And that if then loop goes inside your forever loop. All right, now we want this if then loop to say something cool. It's going to say, okay, cake, if you touch the shark, then play a sound effect. So inside this little shadow, I've got to figure out how to get it to say if touching the shark. And that's going to be in the turquoise sensing circle. And it's actually just the top block. It's really easy to find. It says touching mouse pointer. Drag that out and drop that inside the little shadow right there. Okay, now instead of mouse pointer, click on that and you get a little drop down menu with all your sprites. We're gonna say shark. If the cake touches the shark, then what happens? Well, we want a sound effect to play, right? So let's go to the sound circle. Remember the sound circle that we went to at the very beginning? This is where you get coding blocks for sound effects and music. And the block that we want is the top block that says play sound until done. Go ahead and bring that out and drop that inside your if then loop. 
Now, whatever sound effect we put on this block, that's what's going to play. Well, right now it's set to birthday. I don't know. Yours probably has something different because you probably have a different sprite than me, not the cake. That might be a good one, but I also might want to go find some different ones. So if you want to find some different ones, come up to your sound tab in the top left corner, and this will show you all of the different options for this sprite. Now, all I have is one. I want to go find some more. So come down here to the bottom left corner and hit choose a sound. These are all the sound effects. Okay. Now there's a really good one I like called, oh goodness, I've forgotten. Oh, I think it's called crunch. No, that's not it. Maybe I'll just go with crunch. Go ahead and take a minute and listen to those. When you find the one you want, click on it, and then it will add it to your code. I just remembered the sound I'm looking for is called chomp. And they're in alphabetical order. There it is. Okay. Go ahead and click on the sound. Pause the video for a minute if you need to. And now you can see I've got two options for sound effects. I'm going to go back to my code tab and then come over here to my little sound bar. And now the sound I clicked on is an option. So now my code says, let's read it. It says, all right, cake. When the green flag is clicked forever, the whole entire time the game is going, if you're touching the shark, play this sound effect. So what I want you to do is I want you to start your game and test it out. Go walk over or fly or swim over to your theme and see if the sound effect plays. Okay, mine's working. Hooray. All right. Now, I also want to keep track of some points, right? Like we want to have a game where we're keeping our score. So here's how we do that. We need to go to the variable circle, this dark orange one. This is where we keep track of things like timers and points. And we're going to make a variable. This is whatever you want your score to be called. You could just call it score. I could call mine cake points or I don't know, something funny. I bet you can come up with something really funny. I'm just going to call mine score to keep it simple. So go ahead and type it in and then hit OK. Now it's up here on my game in the top left corner. It says score zero. And you can move this around and put it where you want it. I'm just going to keep mine in the top left corner. If you can't see yours, you need to put a little check mark by it over here in your variable menu. All right. Now there is a block that says change my variable by one. Go ahead and bring that out and put that on top of your sound block. See how it's inside my if then loop, but on top of my sound block. And I'm going to change it to say whatever my score is called. And I called mine score. So if you called yours like, um, I can't even think, like health or something like that, look for whatever you called yours. So I'm gonna, now it says, if touching the chart, change my score by one, which means my score will go up and play the sound effect. So I'm going to test that out now. Turn on your flag, swim over or walk over and see if your score goes up. I have six points. Woohoo. Okay, now I'm noticing when I click on my flag again, my score is stuck at six points. So I've got to add some code that says, always start my score over at zero when I start a new game. So go over to your blocks and find the one that says, set my variable to zero. And drag that out and just set it underneath your green flag. Okay, now again, I'm not using my variable, I'm using score. So I'm going to change it to score. Now when I turn on my green flag, Aha, perfect. My score just reset to zero. <clears throat> okay, that's all that we need to do for the cake. Now you can choose if you, or sorry, you might not have cake, <laughs> but that's all that we need to do for that sprite. Now, if you want more of those sprites to make your game easier, there's a little shortcut. If you bring your mouse down here to the sprite and right click on it, you can duplicate that sprite. Look, now I have two pieces of cake. And the really cool thing is all of our code copied over. So I don't even have to build that code again. So you could do this as many times as you want. Maybe I want four cakes in my game. Okay. Now, if you turn your flag on, they all should start moving around because they have that code on the sprite. Now, if you make too many and you want to get rid of some, just hit this little garbage can. Like for me, I only want two floating around. Okay. Next thing we need to do, we need to add a bad guy or an enemy, right? So let's go back down and pick out a new sprite. Come down here to our little cat face, click on that, and let's go pick out something that we want to avoid. Maybe it's going to be chasing you, or maybe it's a kind of food that you would say is like the bad food. I think I'm going to look for an animal. I know that this is kind of silly because I'm in an ocean, but I might pick out a dinosaur. <laughs> Ooh, maybe I'll pick out an octopus. 
I'm probably make more sense if I, ooh, puffer fish. I'll go with the puffer fish. The shark is running away from the puffer fish. Okay, now turn that sprite to the size that you want. I'm gonna turn mine down to a 25, just like I did with my cake. Okay, now I want this puffer fish floating around just like my cake was doing. So go over to your first sprite that you picked out that was the food or whatever. I'm on my cake right now. And let's just grab this piece of code, the one with the little blue block in it, and pull that over to our new enemy guy. Watch this. Well, first I'm gonna make my code really small. So there's a little magnifying glass down here. Make your code really tiny. It's easier to move that way. And I'm gonna grab that code. You have to grab the top block. If you grab down here, it like breaks it apart. Kind of annoying. So grab that top one, drag it over to your enemy and drop it. And look, now it's right there. Total shortcut. I don't have to build all that code again. So if I turn my flag on, now my puffer fish is moving at the speed of three seconds, just like my cake. Now I kind of want my puffer fish to be a little bit faster. So I think I'm gonna turn him down to like a 1.5. That's one and a half seconds. Now he's gonna be moving pretty fast. That's gonna make my game a bit harder, okay? Next, I've gotta figure out how to build some code that says, if the puffer fish touches my shark, my character or whoever you are, then I'm going to lose some points. So again, I like shortcuts. Let's go back to our, our food item or your second sprite, whatever it is that you chose, and let's go get that code and drag it over and then just modify it. Okay, so just a reminder, make your code really tiny, use these little magnifying glasses and grab that second line of code that we built, the one with the orange box in it. Drag that over to your puffer fish. Sorry, not your puffer fish, your enemy. And you'll see that it's on there, but it kind of stacked on top of your other code. You can just grab that green flag and you can spread your code out, okay? Because when you copy them over, they like to stack on each other. Okay, now I'm just going to modify this. I'm gonna go to this code and start reading down. It says, when the green flag clicked, set my score to zero. Okay, that's good. And forever, if touching my guy, so I'm the shark, so make sure it says your guy on it, change my score by one. No, I want my score to go down. So instead of a one, I'm gonna put a negative one. That means every time I touch my guy, my score will go down by one, okay? And then if you like having that sound effect on there, um, that's already in the drop down menu. Ocean wave is what mine says. Go ahead and leave it. If you want to find a new sound effect, remember you come up here to the tab that says sounds and then down to the bottom left corner where that blue circle is and you can go find a new sound. I want to find one that's kind of like bonk or something like that. Oh, laser. I'm going to go with this one. So click on the one you want. Go back to your code tab. And then it should be in your menu. Okay, now go ahead and test it out. If it's no, if your sound effect is really, really short and you're losing a whole bunch of points, the whole time your character is touching that bad guy, your points are gonna start dropping. If they're dropping too fast, if that's a problem you're having, you can add a little weight block. Go to the orange control circle and the top block says, wait one second. Go ahead and put that underneath your sound block. What that means is before this, this loop can repeat again, um, it, you have to wait a whole entire second. And by the time that second is over, your guys won't be touching anymore. So if you're having that trouble, go ahead and put that weight block there. All right. Okay, our final thing is we need to add our winning code. How do we win this game? Well, in my game, I'm gonna say, you have to get 10 points in order to win. So I like to build this on my guy. So go ahead and click on your character, the very first sprite, and you might have to make some more room. You can just grab this white space and kind of drag it around. And we need to go get a new green flag and a new forever loop. So go to your yellow circle, bring out that green flag, then go to your orange control circle and get that forever loop again, the third block down. And we also need the if then loop, and that's the fourth block down. Bring that out and drop that inside your forever loop. Forever loop. Okay, now this is what I want my code to say right here. I want to say, if my score equals 10, play a winning message and then end the game. So in my little shadow right here, I've got to figure out how to get that to say score equals 10. Now there's an equal sign in the green operator circle. So click on that green circle. 
And if you count down eight blocks from the top, you're going to find a little block that says blank equals 50. Bring that out and drop that in your shadow. Now that number 50, that's your score that you need to win. So I'm going to change mine to a 10. I don't want my game to be too hard. Uh, maybe 15. Okay. Then in this first white circle, I've got to figure out how to get that to say score. Because up here on my game, that's called score. Your might be, yours might be called something different. But let's go back to our dark orange variable circle. And that second block down should be your variable where you're keeping track of your score. Grab that, drag it out, drop it in the circle. Okay, now my code says, if my score equals 15, what do I want to have happen? Well, I want my shark to say something. So come up here to the looks circle. It's the second one down. And grab this top block. It says, say hello for two seconds. I'm going to drag that out and drop it inside the if-then loop. Okay, now you can type whatever you want here. Um, I'm just going to put, good job, you win. I like cake. <laughs> if you don't want to type something long, you could just put, yay, or you win, something short like that. Um, there's one other thing. I think I want my guy to say a little message when my game starts, too. I'm going to grab one more of those, that say hello for two seconds block, and I'm going to stick it right underneath my green flag. Okay? This will be a little message that pops up when I start my game. So here, right now it says hello. So let's see what that looks like. When I click my green flag, see how my shark says hello. Let's type something different there. Mine's going to say use the arrows to eat the cake. Some people like to put the directions for their game there. Some people like to put a funny message. It's totally up to you. Okay, the final block, this is your last block that you need to add, is the block that makes the game stop after you win. So it's in the orange control circle. And if you scroll down to the bottom of those orange blocks and count up four from the bottom, you'll see a block that says stop all. Put that right underneath your message. So now what our code says is when the green flag is clicked, say my funny message, and forever, the whole time the game's going, if my score ever equals 15, then have the shark say my winning message and then stop the game. Okay? That is the end of your first coding class. Good job, everybody. So let me show you really quick how to save your game, okay? Because what you can do is you can save this to your Scratch account and you can come back into it later. You can add more code to it. You can change the speed of everything. You can duplicate enemies, anything you guys want. And you can share it with your friends and family. So I don't have it on my screen, but right up here in the center, in that blue bar on the top, you should have a big green button that says Remix. Go ahead and click on that and it'll save it to your Scratch account. If you don't have the Remix button, that means you're not signed into your Scratch account. You can see up here in the top right corner, it probably says log in or sign in. You'll have to have an account before you can save it. But as a little backup, if you come up here to file, you can hit save to your computer and it will save a file to your computer that later you can upload to Scratch after you create an account, okay? Or if you don't wanna do any of that, that's great too. You don't have to save it. <laughs> All right. Awesome job, everybody. Watch for our next video that will be coming out in a few days where we'll learn some more um, tips and we'll be coding a whole new game. Okay. Have a good day. Thanks, everyone. Bye.